Hello there. So I'm very busy working on my upcoming book, uh, sponsored by actually a partnership with Packet Publisher, another one. This one will be about game design patterns, so I'm very proud because we already have a series here on the channel about that, uh, game design patterns with Grot Engine. And I'm trying to negotiate a sponsorship from Packet so we can make an updated version of this series that I have here on the channel sponsored by this book so let's see if this work out but on this video itself i want to share something really cool with you if you understand the idea that design patterns are not strict technical implementations of things instead they are basically abstract concepts that help us solve some common issues that we find when we are developing uh, applications or in this case games you will understand that an animation tree, especially the animation tree uh, with animation node state machine, is the implementation of the state pattern. Note that having a state machine is not equivalent to implementing the state pattern. This should be very clear. The state pattern takes an object state and turns it into a class that you can then that that we can then treat as an object in runtime. So we can mutate these states in runtime and by mutating them we alter the object behavior in runtime so this is very cool. What I want to show you here is that we can make very complex transitions and transitions is an essential part of the state pattern especially when we are implementing a finite state machine using animation tree. So the first thing that I want to show you here is that um, if you don't know about the state pattern it presumes that you should have an object that will be the context. The context is the object in which the state class, the state object, will represent a state from this object. A state is nothing but a set of properties that a, a set of values that the object properties are currently in. So we have many states that an object can be in. And when we implement the state machines and the state pattern, we are basically just shrinking the, the possibilities of, of possible states down to something that we can manage. And by but what is important here is to understand that the state pattern is composed basically by three things: states, transitions, and a context object. And using the animation tree we have some uh, a property called advanced expression base node this is the node that when we are using the advanced expression conditions when we are setting the transitions between one one animation to another uh, we can use this object as base node for making expressions meaning that we will have access to its properties as well and we can make some calls on the properties as well by default, this object is the animation tree itself, but we can change it to set the context object of our animation tree. So of our state pattern, right? So in this case, I will use this bumping pig for one reason. So what I want to do here is to make this, um, is to make this enemy here react to when the player enters into its a vision area which is this yellow area here when the player enters into this vision area it will perform this animation uh, the attack animation right here so let's see attack it will do basically that and it will uh, repeat that uh, in, uh, while the player is inside its vision area when the player leaves it will go back to its previous state so I want to do that but I want to be I don't want to make a lot of code because if you go here into the states, you can see that to transit to transit to these states, you can see the vision area entered area and context state changed to find the attack state. So this is basically how I transit to this state at this moment. But you can see that I don't need to access anything from this area uh, from this area object here. So there is no need to process it a lot. I don't need to get access to it in one time. I can be, because what I'm doing is that I'm basically masking only the layer where it will detect the player itself. 
So there's no need to check out anything like groups or tags or things like this or metadata because once the player interacts with this vision area, it will know that the player is there and will transit to the attack state. What I want to do here is to take rid of this condition because the code is a bit uh, chunky. I don't, I don't want to do uh, connections and disconnections of these uh, signals here. And instead, what I can do is what I'm going to show you right now. So you saw that uh, when we enter into the attack state, it sets the animation tree condition attack. So uh, just so you know, this is a, an interface that I created myself because Godot Engine um, suggests you to set directly the parameter slash condition slash the, the condition that you are trying to set the, the value to. But I create this interface here because it makes it easier for me to basically just enable or disable any conditions without having to do this set parameter conditions slash the condition itself. So going back to the text state, you can see that basically I'm just setting this, I'm enabling, enabling this attack condition here on the, the animation tree. And by doing so, what we are going to, to have is basically uh, if I'm in the idle, the idle, uh, oh, it's not active. So if I'm in the idle uh, animation and I uh, I set attack to true, it will transit to the attack animation. If I'm on the run animation and set the attack, it will transit to the attack animation. So if I set this condition to true. Instead, what I can do is the following. So I will have, uh, let's say on the run advance, instead of having this condition attack here, which is basically a simple boolean operation, I will do the following. You can see that here on the bumping pig, I have a property called vision area, which it will point out to this vision area right here, which is the one that detects if the player is inside the vision area of the bumping pig. And what I'm going to do is to make a expression for this transition here. So instead of having the condition, I will have an expression that will say vision area. And this is only possible because I set the animation player, oh, the animation tree advanced expression base node to the bumping pig. So we are, set, we are assessing the properties of this node right here. So going back to the animation tree transition, vision area dot get overlapping areas dot size greater than zero. Basically what I'm saying here is that if there is something overlapping with, is if there is an area overlapping with the vision area, we will basically trigger this uh, condition here. And if we test this out, Yep, it's working. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is a very powerful thing to do because we can have many properties that we can access through this um, expression here. And once we have everything like uh, tied together and the, the conditions that we want to access in this um, expressions here, you can see that we can access even objects. So we don't need to have like explicit conditions. We can have dynamic conditions like this one. So this one basically takes in real time, what are the count size of the overlapping areas of the, the vision area. So this allows us to make very complex transitions with our objects. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a very quick one, it's a, a tip one if you, if you wish. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and follow me for more tips. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up because I always forget to ask for these things. Subscribe for more tips and yeah, I think that that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time. See you there.